Well, we're in celebration mode here at Index Fund Advisors today because it's exactly 25 years ago, Mark Hebner, that, right. uh, that IFA.com was incorporated. That is absolutely correct, Robin, and, and welcome to uh, the U.S. Thank you. You had your big trip over here from <laughs> London, and we're uh, very excited to have you here with us today. Tell me briefly, how did Index Fund Advisors come about? So the company came about as the result of a friend who needed some help in better understanding what the investment community was telling her about her portfolio. So she had a couple different investment advisors, and she asked if I would come with her to these meetings and basically translate what, were, what they were saying and try to explain it to her. And my response was, you know, I'd be more than happy to do that. I've had my own portfolio for, for many years now, but quite frankly, I really didn't understand what was going on myself. I would get these phone calls that maybe we should buy oil stocks today, or maybe <laughs> we should switch to gold. And I go, okay, let's do that. Let's do this. Let's do that. <laughs> and so because I felt responsible uh, to her, I thought, you know, I better really read up on this. So I went down to the local bookstore, walked out of there with two bags of books, literally 22 books. I had a, 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 a count of them at the time. Started reading through them and some of the more famous books that I still recommend to investors is A Random Walk Down Wall Street ah, by Bert Malkiel and Bogle on Mutual Funds by yep. Jack Bogle and a number of other uh, books about indexing or passive investing in general. And I had some books, you know, by active managers as well. And there was a stark contrast between the two in that all of the books about passive investing seemed to reference academic papers and Nobel laureates and a scientific analysis, a statistical analysis of markets and about the performance of managers. And the books by active managers were not that. It was a little bit about how they felt about this and how they felt about that and a recounting of the current news or past news without a recognition that a lot of that news was embedded in the price. And it was a, an incredible awakening for me to dig into this literature and these books and ultimately the academic papers mm. about the passive investing I, I would call it a revolution. That was another book by uh, Scott Simon called The Index Fund Revolution, I believe, or The Index Revolution. And it was just a, a, a huge shock to me that in my own portfolio, <laughs> I had underperformed what I could have earned if I just put my money in the S&P 500 uh, for this period of time. And as I explained in the uh, film by uh, uh, Dimensional Fund Advisors called Tune Out the Noise, I estimated at the time that that cost me about $30 million. Wow. A lot it's of money. an estimate, <laughs> and it's hard to recount all that, but from what I've seen from other investors, that yeah. wouldn't surprise me. So, Mark, to cut a long story short, you set up index fund advisors with this investment uh, philosophy that you'd learnt about. What you're doing now is fairly, in a sense, mainstream. But in those days, you were a pioneer. You were one of the first firms in the US to use um, dimensional fund advisors, for example. Well, uh, not well, that's part of it. But I think the bigger part is I was one of the first firms to take this investment uh, advice philosophy and put it on the internet. There was really, I mean, it's very common we talk about the robo advisor today. Robo really just means you buy and hold and rebalance and maybe tax loss harvest like a robot. In other words, you leave out the emotional component, which is now referred to as behavioral finance. But back in the day, 25 years ago, I don't even know if that term was uh, thrown around. I don't recall it. I don't think it was. No. Yeah. And so the, the idea of buying and holding these portfolios and having a questionnaire online that would help investors identify 
the appropriate level of risk for them, them given all these uh, factors we identified that impact that decision, was, I think, the first time that it occurred online. Mm-hmm. And, and then tying those, the, the answer of that questionnaire to a preset portfolio of passively managed funds. So that was very unique at the time and allowed me to market across the U.S. Mm. where most registered investment advisors were focused on just their local mm. network of accountants and lawyers and mm. trying to get referrals from existing clients. Well, as a marketing professional, Mark, what really impresses me about what you've done is that you saw early on with the growth of the internet that content was going to be very important. And you, you wrote this book, Index Funds, uh, the 12-step recovery program for active investors. Very good. We also <laughs> made, uh, there's a bit of a mouthful that one. Uh, <laughs> we also made uh, Index Funds the movie, which yeah. sadly didn't win any Oscars, but um, oh. maybe helped to um, uh, change a few uh, retirements for the better, if you like. Well, I guarantee it did. We're up to 500,000 views now on YouTube. But go God, ahead, I'm sorry. I'm really, really <laughs> pleased to hear that. So w- you couldn't have imagined 25 years ago that you would be where you are now. I mean, you've got, what, nearly $5 billion under management? That's correct. And more than that today. Uh, amazingly, I could have imagined, and in fact, like most startups, my imagination exceeded even this. I have to say that given the evidence, I found this even harder than I originally anticipated it to be. Not that I'm disappointed, it's, it's worked out very well, but I think there is a lot more people that need help. To, to answer your question about how popular this was at the time, maybe 5% of the assets uh, here in the US were held in index funds among uh, mutual funds, okay, Mm -hmm. among mutual Mm -hmm. funds. And today, with the advent of the ETF, we actually had, I think, one ETF when we started, the Spider. And now today, we have so many ETFs that are are based off of a index. We're now at a point where 50% of the assets held in these ETFs or mutual funds are passively managed. But, like Jack Bogle said, buy the index and don't forget the hold. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> the buy and hold. He says, do your buying, but don't forget the hold. Absolutely. And unfortunately, the ETFs have just become another trading vehicle. In fact, if you look at the top traded securities in the US, Several of them are ETFs uh, based on the S&P 500. So investors may have embraced buying an index, but they have not embraced holding it. And that's a huge difference because of the inability for investors to time literally anything. If you think Mm -hmm. about it, Mm -hmm. indexing is about no timing. It's Mm -hmm. the only time is is how long you're invested. It's it's time in the market versus timing the market. And all trading is really based on timing. And based on the assumption that the reason it's a good time is something's either overvalued or undervalued. Mm -hmm. And Eugene Fama, Professor Eugene Fama from the University of Chicago, who literally spent his life researching the markets, and I don't think there really is anybody still alive who understands the markets better than him, won his Nobel Prize in 2013 for this idea that there are no securities that are overvalued or undervalued, at least that you Mm. would know in advance, and instead they're all fairly valued. Mm. And when securities are fairly valued, then the returns of those securities are tied to the risks of them. Mm. And instead, most people are focused on speculation Mm. about whether securities are over or undervalued. So final question, Mark, Um, where does index fund advisors go from here? Uh, I noticed since I was uh, here last, you've added a new tax division. Uh, Have you got any other plans as well? Well, we have a a new institutional uh, division as well. And I think, one of the next segments of the investing world to fall towards the passive strategies are institutions. They have long been 
guided by institutional consultants whose primary job has been to uh, hire and fire managers on behalf of that institution. There's a famous paper who concludes that the fired managers actually do better than the ones they hired uh -huh. mm. uh, subsequent to that uh, firing and hiring. Yeah. And it's really kind of sad for all the beneficiaries of these mm. institutional accounts yeah. to end up with this below market performance because of this hiring and firing of investment managers. These consultants also help put together asset allocation, mm. which is a really important function. But the idea of hiring a manager who's gonna outperform an appropriate benchmark is basically a falsehood and it needs to change and we're gonna change it. And what is so frustrating, Mark, is that many of these state pension funds, they're investing on behalf of people who actually uh, don't earn a great deal of, of money. You That's know, they're, right. they're, they're people of modest means. They're maybe teachers. They're they're janitors and so yep. on. And 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 this is a way that index funds can can really help. It can dramatically help them versus what they've been getting in the past. And so, much, so many of these pensions are underfunded, partly because they have been actively managing these portfolios. So this is a really important idea that needs to continue to grow, and we're going to try to do our part in improving these outcomes for all investors uh, across the world. Well, Mark, on behalf of everyone who's had the privilege of working with you over the last few years, on behalf of all your investors as well, who've, whose lives you've helped to change, yeah. thank you so much for everything you've done. and. It's a little bit early in the day for, for, for champagne, but we'll, we maybe we'll have a glass later. Right. Um, but here's to the next 25 years of Index Fund Advisors. Thank you, Robin. <laughs>